<laughs> Sky everybody, hello Good day, good morning, good evening, good night Hi, thank you for coming to today's stream, hello, hello Um, wait, I would just like to check How's audio? Can you hear the game? It seems like you can And then, also, wait, hang on Time is not right, it is not 12.59am right now Hang on, let me restart my clock. Audio good as always? Good. Um, when I click off of the game, the music and audio stops. Or does it? No, it does not, apparently. Well, okay, well, that problem has <laughs> been fixed. So, welcome to today's stream, which will be about Isle of Maligree. I have been approached by Gilded Ruin Games through AN um, to play Isle of Maligree, which is their third... A uh, game project. I did a little bit of um, what's it called? I did a little bit of reading about the game and the developers. How are you feeling? I'm very EP. <laughs> I'm very very EP. Um, I think it's it's just a matter of building up my stamina again. But aside from that, I'm good. I'm just very EP. Gilded Rune Game spawn the chat. Wait, real? Hang on, real? You're right! Oh my god! Hello there, Gilded Rune Games! I'm not sure which one of you is representing the team right now, but thank you so much again for approaching me to play this game. I did a little bit of reading about it and about other games you've created, and I must say, I'm very impressed by um, the variety of your portfolio, so it's very... It's still here! Hello there, Luke! Thank you so much for joining us today! Oh, now I feel a little self-conscious. <laughs> um, so Isle of Malagree is a... Well, choose your own adventure, you know, visual novel style. I did notice that in the settings, though, um, I have a controller up right now. There seems to be dice rolls, so I'm very interested in that. Um, uh, Gilded Ruin Games approached me through A and saying specifically that they think that I would enjoy the game. And I appreciate that confidence. And, you know, I'm always down to try out and play new games. So I'm very excited. Oh my god. Um, Mr. Luke, please do not be afraid of the bricks. The skylight's like greeting people with bricks. <laughs> so um, uh, don't worry, they don't hurt. <laughs> um, if there's anything else I want to talk about, please check out um, Gilded Ruin Games on Twitter. Um... I think they also have a YouTube, do they? They also have a Discord and as well as their website, which I have pinned in my pinned comment up top. So if you're interested, like if you find out that you like this game, um, please do consider supporting them by buying it or any of their other games. They have um, Lonely Path, which is a puzzle game. And then the other one was like a dungeon crawler one, dungeon crawler, roguelite. Um, hang on. I have the website open right now, but I can't remember the, the name because I have all of my other streaming screens on. But yeah, I suggest you guys go check them out and let's get started with the game. Um, yeah. Okay. So far, one thing I've noticed is quite a lot of polish in this one with the presentation, which I'm liking a lot of in the Isle of Malaga. Wait a minute. Hang on. Game ain't capturing. Oh my god, why is game not capturing? Hang on. <laughs> I literally went into the next screen. Hang on, hang on. Why did it stop? Why did it... Oh! Okay, now this one works. Earlier... Okay, so I was using two different types of game capture. One of them was a window capture. The other one is an actual game capture source in OBS. Which, um... Apparently wasn't working in the opening sequence. I'm not Vanessa. <laughs> I I'm not sure if it's just like a matter of having different states in the game or something. But well, anyway, let's let's move on. <laughs> it's working now, so that's what matters. In this game, your choices matter, and according to the reviews, it actually does matter. So I'm very interested. The decisions you make may result in unique interactions otherwise missed. Okay. Okay. And remember, there are no wrong choices. Oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll believe you. Many years ago, people discovered they could gain great power by making deals with spirits from other realms. Ooh, we've got uh, paranormal, supernatural, supernatural stuff going on. Exciting, exciting. Warlocks? <laughs> Have you tried turning it on and off? It's working, guys. You can see it, right? You can see it, right? 
<laughs> also, Renfield, hello, welcome. We are reviewing a game that I received a review copy from the devs themselves, which is a team of three, by the way. Um, programmer, writer, and then the artist. I think, actually, it's two programmers, if I remember correctly. The co-founders, yeah. Um, let me see how we can go about... What? Wait, how do we select these? Ah, okay, wait, there we go. So, we've got... Hmm? It's okay, so press down. Uh, if you're playing on controller, you press down to um, access these little buttons here. So, let's make a save, just to double check. There we go, okay. And then, is this like an inventory? Oh, we have inventory! Okay, I'm excited, I'm excited. Alright, Luke is a programmer and writer. Ah, okay. Team log. Stats. Okay, we don't have stats just yet. Um, anything else? Square, triangle. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just checking. Anyway, let's proceed. <clears throat> this newfound temptation, as likely innocent as it is malignant, preys on the minds of those who can grasp it and strikes fear into those who cannot. As the chords are struck, the influence of arcane entities continue to bleed further and further into this world. You work for the mainland police as an investigator. Ooh, okay, okay, all right. What system is this on, Commander? Currently, just Steam, PC, I believe. I'm not sure if they're planning on any other releases, but um, I'm playing right now on my computer with a Steam copy using a controller. You can play this with a mouse and keyboard, though. Mm -mm. <clears throat> As the arcane mixes with organized crime, the need for people like you has never been higher. But your latest case is different. It started when you heard a radio transmission from the distant Isle of Malagree. Who is this? Have you seen this person? La Larissa P Patreon, age 21, date missing, unknown, brown hair, glasses, brown eyes. Hmm. They reported a missing person and, in that moment, you felt a strange wave of deja vu. Out of curiosity, you checked the record room and found multiple similar reports all of them written in your own hand. Yet, you don't remember any of them. It seems nobody else does either. So now, you find yourself on a boat, bound for the island with nothing but questions. Somebody there must know what's causing this. You just hope you can solve this case before you forget. But first, you must remember yourself. Ooh, input name? Oh, 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 stats, stats, we get to, we get to pick stats and, oh, fate. Okay, interesting. All right, fate. I'm guessing this is like, um, your, your background of sorts. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. Okay, oracle. To be an oracle is to give your mind to the arcane, to let it be pushed and pulled by its erratic nature. You are blessed with adaptability like no other and the power of foresight. Some see this power as a gift, but you are not so naive. You know that you know what can happen to the minds of those who expose themselves to the spirit so freely. The madhouses are filled with those like you, but you are determined not to, to not make the same mistakes. Great opportunity requires great risk after all. And then there's arcane talent. On one of your past cases, you caught a fledgling demon causing chaos. Instead of banishing the creature, you instead made a pact with it. Now, Alistair, your demon companion, is in your service until your death, however soon that may be. While not exactly the ideal assistant, their gifts to the arcane are undeniable. And although you'd never tell them, it's nice, you know, it's nice to no longer be alone. You could smuggle them aboard the boat to Malagree without people knowing, so now you need to find a quiet place to summon them. <laughs> okay, a companion, all right. Clearly, our commander is an oracle. She's too pawned to be- oh, Wow, wow, hey. Hey, I have my own little familiar, excuse me. Kagutsu, she's just resting right now. <laughs> I love Disco Elysium. I, I know a lot of us here in the community, and also I myself really, really like Disco Elysium. Um, I've, I tend to get word soup brain. I get a little bit um, overwhelmed with how much... Um, how big the concepts are, <laughs> but I've enjoyed watching um, the Sky Bros play, yeah. Okay, as for technician, the arcane is not the only source of wonders. So too does the spark of electricity provide. 
You've always had an uncanny way with machines. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry. You can build and repair them with nothing but scrap. You've always been good at telling how a machine works just by looking at one, even if you've never seen one like it before. When you hear the electrical buzz of one of your works coming to life, you cannot help but feel a connection to something greater. Ooh, mm, this is a tough choice. This is a tough choice. <laughs> Uh-oh, wait, guys, we have the devs in here. Let's <coughs> let's not be too hasty here. Let's not, yeah. Um, I personally am very partial to playing the arcane talent just because I think it would be cool to have a little buddy. A little, uh, I don't know how... What's the word? How tricky tricky or mischievous they may be, but we'll find out. Oh snap, I forgot to refill my water. Uh, let's refill it halfway through. Mm. Ah, a buddy. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, um, let me see. Let's go with... Okay, arcane talent. Alright. And now... Oh, right, we can pick stats. We've got five points. Um, Aura, Arcane Potency, so I guess how effective- I'm guessing there's magic combat in here, from what I can tell. Intellect, Logic, and Reasoning. S okay, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Sagacity? Sagacity? <laughs> Wisdom and Perception, okay. Luck, how fate favors you. Endurance, Resilience and Tenacity. Agility, Speed and Precision. Vigor, Physical Strength. So you can only- Put in five points. That's interesting. Okay. So, hmm. Let me think. Let me think. I guess to get <laughs> all luck. <laughs> I am pretty lucky, but let's add one in luck for now. Um, I'd say that I'm kind of wise, maybe? Think, okay, wait, hang on guys, give me give me a sec, give me a sec, hear me out, okay. Now, usually when you're playing games like these, it's usually really fun to have like a persona, like play a certain like character archetype. For example, um, I was watching Elder Skybro play, uh, what was it? Um, Disco Elysium, he went all in on the sorry cop on the sorry cop thing <laughs> it was so, it was interesting so hmm should i play a himbo <laughs> should i play a himbo character or maybe uh maybe a snarky detective perhaps because it'll also influence like the options that i choose because if i just play as myself i'm gonna be miss little goody two shoes and that's gonna be so boring that's gonna be so so boring um okay let's be like a, a big talking but kind-hearted himbo so okay oh could i see that Thank you so much for the raid! Hello, new viewers, welcome! We were discussing about how to be a himbo! <laughs> Hello! Thank you so much, I hope you had a good stream! Um, what did you guys stream today? Thank you so much! Um, yeah, uh, please don't mind the, the bricks, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, this is how we greet people. <laughs> Koro-san, thank you so much! Um, and um, we are playing currently um, Isle of Malagri. Which is, as you can see, it's like a it's a visual novel type, um, similar to like if you've ever played D and D, you know, or Disco Elysium, it's it's within that genre. Um, a CRPG, <laughs> I think this counts as a CRPG, but mainly based in text and visual novel format. Mm. Hi, Sky, we built one of the Animal Crossing Lego sets. <gasps> Ooh, cool! Wait, I didn't know that Animal Crossing had a Lego set. That's great. Um. Oh, you, oh, Planescape as well. <gasps> oh, yeah, Planescape. Yeah, Planescape is great. Mm -mm. By the way, um, if you guys uh, <laughs> want to know that we have one of the devs here with us today, so say hi to Gilded Rune Games. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, okay, so going back on track, how to be a himbo. Okay, we, I think, um, there doesn't seem to be anything about charisma in here. Um, if we're him, but we gotta be strong, right? We gotta be strong. Maybe we're kind of buff, and then we don't we don't need wisdom and perception right now. Um, like I feel like that's gonna bite me in the 
in the butt later. Um, all vigor, no intelligence. You already have max raise. Where's the chart? Also, I just realized I think my wings are blocking part of the screen. So give me a moment. I'm gonna. Where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. G give me a second. Let me just size myself down. Cause actually, let's remove the. Let's remove the wings there. Now you can see it better. Okay, cool. Um, this is... Hmm. Oh, do I not have it selected? Wait, I, I can't see the cursor. Where is it? <laughs> Wait, where's the cursor? Okay, never mind. Let's, let's just play with the mouse for now. Um, agility. Uh, hmm, hmm. Um, you know what? Let's, let's double down on luck. So, investigator name. I'm thinking Himbo, right? What if we just named ourselves Farmer? <laughs> to, to call back to um, one of our previous TTRPG streams where I, I DM'd for you guys. Investigator... Oh, wait! Hang on, it's either Investigator Farmer or, or Sly Shenyu. <laughs> it could be Sly Shenyu. Mm. You know what? Yeah, let's let's bring back Sly. Sly Shinny. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I need the hat. Do I have the hat on hand? Wait. I can I can download the hat. Give me a second. Let me just download the hat. Okay. Um Okay. And then just pull in the hat. And there we go. Yes! Okay, we've got the hat. We're good. Okay. So now with the hat, we can we can go on our adventure now. <laughs> okay, okay. So Sly Shinyu, Sly Sly is a man. All right. So Sly Shinyu is a man. He him. Let's embark. Let's go to Isle of Malagri. You awaken to the sounds of waves washing against rock. The air is thick with mist, and the calls of seabirds pierce through the salty sea air. You, you get to hear the ah ah ah. <laughs> Looking around, you find yourself sat on a cold wooden bench which lines one edge of a sea vessel. Hazily looking left towards the back of the vessel, you spot an arcane a a a a aeolipile, aeolipile? Aeolipile. rotating madly within its cage, humming with magic and acting as the vessel's engine. Oh, okay, interesting. I'm not sure what an alien pile is chat can you be my dictionary can you google what alien pile is <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm curious about how important magic is in this world do only some people have it or does everyone have a little bit from what i can tell so far it seems like some are more inclined with it but it seems that a lot of arcane elements power most of the world the Aeliopile or Hero Engine was invented by Hero of Alexandria in 1 BC. It used water-filled copper sphere that, when heated, generated steam. Ah, okay. So it's it's like a steam engine but powered with magic. Yeah. Okay. This, thank you. Something with wind. All right. <clears throat> Much closer, you see other passengers, most wrapped in blankets to fight against the cold. But some sit oddly upright, dressed in suits, briefcases by their side. <sighs> A radio crackles to life. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the misty Isle of Malagri. We will soon be ready for you all to disembark. Just before you leave, do make sure to take all of your luggage with you. And remember, with people disappearing as of late, you should mind that you don't stay out alone at night. Ooh, spooky text! Ooh, it's doing the wiggle! <laughs> I like the little details like those. Also, Rainbow X, thank you so much for the gifted membership! Renfield, please do thank them, okay? Thank you! The fact that the devs are doing historical research for a more immersive world is admirable. Yeah! Don't step on the city, what? Excuse me? The radio dies down once more. Looking right, there isn't much to see but the captain's cabin and the light emanating from a nearby lighthouse that seems effort seems to effortless effortlessly carve away at the mist. By the way, I'm really liking the art. It's really nice. Like, um, with everything in grayscale, I'm happy to see that um, everything sticks out in its own way and like. Every, everything feels very cohesive, so my artist brain is tingling. 
Yeah. <clears throat> like moth to a flame, the vessel mindlessly trails towards it. Then suddenly, as if from nowhere, the town lights of Malagri itself pierce through the mists and the vessel's vessel corrects its course. <clears throat> The town itself stretches across most of the visible shoreline, sharing the space among jagged rocks and sprawling thickets. Through the mists, it's hard to make out what looms further inland and above the town. However, you think the vague silhouette is that of a forest tree line. Hmm, okay. It's bold to make an entirely grayscale game, but they really pulled it off from the Steam screenshot. Yeah, I agree. You see the docks of Malagree fast approaching. On them, various figures linger, some waiting to greet newcomers, some with bags of their own, likely to board the ship after you. Um, uh, hmm. What do we pick here? Look at one of the passengers, look overboard into the waters. What would Sly Shinyu do? I feel like Sly, being the man that he is, um, would probably investigate the people, take a, take a look at them. Oh! You turn to look back at, one, at the other passengers, catching the eye of an older woman who smiles at you. She's so cute! She's so cute! You look tired, dear. The mist does that, you know. Oh? My grandson Peter lives out here. I wish he would come visit me more, but instead I'm forced to come to him. He's a wonderful painter, but out here I do worry for his health. That might explain my headache. Perhaps he enjoys the quiet. Can you tell me anything about this place? Hmm. I feel like Sly would be the kind to complain about his headache. So... She looks kind of sister. What do you mean? She looks innocent! Well, I don't know. She looks fine to me. So glad you guys like it. Yeah, it's great. <clears throat> I can tell you're new. The mist affects newcomers the most. I personally find the stuff ghastly, but what can you do? I heard closing your eyes helps. That and the pills that the doctor sells in the main market square. Oh no, everybody's gonna get addicted! She smiles briefly before gathering up her things. Oh, the sound of hissing steam and magic discharging overwhelms the boat, a sign that marks the voyage's end. The arcs coming from the engine, like most magic, cannot be seen directly, but as afterimages in one's mind. The boat's crew stay far away, no doubt aware of what would happen if an arcing surge of magic would hit them. Ooh, okay. The passengers stand as the boat's gangplank lowers slowly but surely. Your luggage in hand, you feel cobbled stones underfoot once more. I like this! This looks really nice! I I like the textury line art and you know the the, the watercolory textured like shades. It's nice, it's cute, it's pretty. I like it. You make sure to account for your belongings, which consists of some basic supplies, clothes, and various tools of the trade, alongside the slip of paper you were given directing you to your lodgings. Click on your journal to access your items and see log. <gasps> yeah, baby! Let's look! Can we can we look at it? I think we have it selected now, right? Do we? Hang on to me. There we go, okay. So let's look at the inventory. <gasps> we have stuff! What is this? <laughs> Mist sickness! Your mind feels fuzzy after your journey to the island. Maybe it was the trip. But you're certain there is something strange about the mist. Maybe a doctor could help. Grants a minus one intellect bonus. No, we're already like zero! We're negative one now! No! Okay, aside from that, we've got... Directions to lodgings. A note of paper with directions to your lodgings in the lower section of Malagree. Okay. Alright, alright. <clears throat> so, its sleek design seems out of place here. Its doors open, revealing a young woman in a neat black uniform. Her brown hair tied back into a ponytail. Oh, I roll? What? Luck failed? What? That's a 17! That's a, that's a 17! Our fail- Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. This woman is- This woman's not good news. Wait. Sagasti <laughs> I rolled a one! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Dude, I rolled a 17, though. Wait, that's really high. Yikes. <laughs> but everything else is super low. You know, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, thing is, I don't know if those are like the base rolls or if they've already added on like our stat bonuses. Like, for example, what if that roll was a 15, but since we have plus two to luck, 
it's now a 17. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, <clears throat> she, head she heads directly towards you, extending a hand. Salutations. You must be the mainland investigator that was sent out to so was sent to look into the missing persons cases. She's pretty. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> um sagacity near impossible. Zero. <laughs> ah shit. Um <laughs> You know what? I think in the first place Sly would be like, "Yeah, that's me." He'd be loud and proud about being an investigator. Yep, that's me. Apologies. My name is Melody, the Arcane Authority of Malagri. Ooh, okay. I do hope that we can get along here. Perhaps if you're up for it, I could take you to my office to discuss matters and enjoy some tea. Oh, we can ask questions. Let's let's ask about Arcane Authority. I'd have thought you of all people would know of Ar Arcane Authorities. I suppose the mists are getting quite intense this time of year. An arcane authority is a form of local law enforcement, normally a very talented magic user. Preferably one that's also from Malagri. I work with police to monitor and control magic usage on the island. Oh, too much magic on the island, maybe? I guess it's difficult. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, you know what? I'm a l I'm lucky, maybe. Mm, you know, I'm a... Let's, let's, let's ask. Hmm? Oh, passed! We passed! Fifteen! Oh, let's go! <sighs> About two years, I became Arcane Authority at the age of 19. You're 21? Damn, okay. That, that is young. Alright. <laughs> Luck is on my side. Let's go. People should find that impressive. Instead, everyone just treats me like a kid. Or worse. Or worse. I'd rather not talk about it. She seems a bit deflated for a second before regaining herself. Anyway, how about that offer? I'm sure you'll be interested in what I have to say, and the tea itself isn't half bad either. You consider her offer? Um... Are you with the police? <laughs> to a degree. I'm not currently following any official orders. However, let's say... Professional curiosity has brought me here. I have a feeling that you and I can come to an arrangement that would benefit us both. But alas, I'm getting ahead of myself. How about that offer for tea? You consider offer- hmm, hmm. I think- I think that Sly would definitely like a drink with a pretty lady, even if it's not alcoholic. Melody brightens, heading over to the motor car door, opening for- Ooh, motor car! Okay, okay. It's not that far from here. Climb in and I'll put your luggage in the back. Getting into the vehicle, you cannot help but notice the subtle sweet fragrance and well-kept interior of the car. Hmm, hmm. Various dials ready to hum to life sit before you as Melody climbs in herself, closing the door. The, engines, uh, the, uh, the engine of the motor car roars to life, dials dancing as Melody takes off along the dockside. Ooh, we in new area now. The motor car bounces only slightly as the cobblestone beneath challenges its suspension. Before long, you find yourself moving quickly through dimly lit streets away from the water's edge. Melody, eyes still fixed on the road ahead, seems more relaxed now. Did you know that some of these buildings are hundreds of years old? Malagri itself has been around a lot longer than most people realize. Oh, huh. okay, that's cool. Although, it has of course changed a lot over its history. There even used to be two islands before the other one sank. Huh? Huh? It sank? How? What happened? I feel like that's something important. Uh, hmm? Huh? Let's ask about the past. <clears throat> For as long as people can remember, Malagri has always been a place of power. It was once covered in a lush forest said to grant power to, any to those who wandered it. But people who chased those rumors eventually cut most of it down, so they could live here in comfort. Now all that's left is the beautiful garden in the center of town. Oh no! Forest spirits angry! <laughs> spores! Spores? Spores? Forest spirits? <laughs> Sorry! Uh, yes, the sports. Mmm, the sports angry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my, my brain always contracts words. I My brain works too fast for my mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the one place on the island that can muddle even my senses. I think it toys with magic users. 
My old master used to say that the garden can be walked around in less than an hour, but could take a day to walk across. Of course, the northern forest might also be a remnant of the original, but it lacks the garden's magical aura, making me think otherwise. Outside the garden, the second most magical place has to be the lighthouse. Although that's less the work of the spirits and more the work of my old master Gorn. Oh, okay. He made the lighthouse? Cool. He turned the lighthouse into an unbreakable prison for a demon who was otherwise destined to bring doom upon our island. Oh my god, the lighthouse is a, is a, is a tomb. Oh my god, it is a ceiling point for a, a great demon. This can't be good. <laughs> this cannot be good. I'm getting Lovecraft vibes from this. I have a feeling we're dealing with some crazy stuff. I agree, and I'm excited. Wait, let me drink some water. Mm. Oh, classic Gorn. Isn't Gorn the name of another specific, like, character, devil, demon? Mm. There's always a girl, a man, and a lighthouse. <clears throat> It's my job now, among many other responsibilities, to keep that lighthouse, lighthouse protected. There are those who seek to break its seals from the outside. Oh no! So don't try anything. She smiles. Ah, here we are. The motor car comes slowly to a halt, dials dying down along with its engine. She turns to you before getting out of the motor car. I just wanted to say thanks for coming along with me. I know I might seem a little cryptic, but I truly am trying to help. Melody gets out of the vehicle and unlocks the door of a grand building faced with a cold black faced with cold blackish brick. The inside of the building looks less like an office, more like a home. Okay, so this is her this is her place. I see she's got a lot of like notes lying around. Is that a little knick-knack collection on the upper right hand corner? Hang on, I'm trying I'm trying to like look into it. G give me one second. I'm not sure there's like taxidermy there. And it's it's those drawers, the lot of little things in it. Because I've been watching a certain anime, I'm inclined to think that it's like medicinal supplies, but it's probably not. Maybe it's stuff like letters and like a filing cabinet. Okay, she's got is that an award or trophies in the back? Clock? Seems stuff that seems like postcard letters. Uh okay, cool. Alright. Mm, solar system thingy on the left? Uh, I, I just really like looking at the... Um, wait, we can hide the thing and like appreciate the art some more. Alright, cool. Um, show. Alright, let's, let's continue. Taxidermy bird, let's go! <laughs> Sky... <laughs> Sly Shunyu, investigator, of course. I gotta investigate every nook and cranny for any cool hidden details, you know? <clears throat> oh, are we still in click to continue? Hmm? There we go. You spot a small framed picture of a younger Melody smiling with glee, standing next to a grumpy looking man. Wait, one sec. Excuse me. <laughs> Wooden furnishings, plants, and papers, while seemingly organized, fill most of the space. She leads you through a hallway into a large study adorned with countless bookshelves. She gestures towards a chair. Please, take a seat. I'll go fetch some tea. As you wait for her to return, you take a look around. This place has the distinct weight of a building that has stood for many years. Mm -hmm. And yes, that odd sensation of power. The kind that only accumulates in places where the arcane is practiced often. Here you are. She hands you a cup and saucer before walking across the room to sit opposite you. So, let's talk about why you are here. There's something strange happening on this island. Every now and then, someone disappears, leaving nothing but their shoes. Then, a few days later, not even their closest loved ones can remember them without the aid of a picture. Oh no! Oh no, that's no good! I've already started trying to find out who is behind this. Whoever it is must be incredibly gifted in the arcane. But after a few days, any useful information is forgotten along with the victim. Half of the people on this isle either think I'm responsible or blame me for not preventing it. Which, in turn, only makes it all the more difficult for me to actually get anywhere. The police, who should be my closest allies, are instead my greatest hindrance. They restrict my access, withhold evidence from me, and undermine my goals wherever possible. And what do they do? Nothing. 
Just collect the remains, do the same tests, and get the same answers. That's insanity, and it's only getting worse. That's why I need someone like you. The police here are fools. Work with me, and I'm sure we can solve these cases together without them. Mmm-hmm. I... You know... Mm-hmm. I, as the player, think it's a good idea to play, like, to, to work with her. But, like, in terms of Sly, he'll just be like, mm, all right, pretty lady. <laughs> Gotta play cool and aloof? Do you guys... Re- d- mm. Hmm. Like, at the same time, if her master is the one who did seal a goddamn demon in the lighthouse, like, it is kind of sussy, you know, if you really think about it. It's... Mm, mm, I'm... I'm thinking she has access to info that may be useful to us. That's the thing. But at the same time, if if people know that we are working with her and we want to get something out of the police, maybe they might not cooperate with us if they know that we're working together. Unless we have the option to hide that, which we don't know just yet, right? Sounds like a ticking time bomb. Mmm, choices are so hard. God. Um... <clears throat> By the way, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but the little pop of color in the character is always really nice. Mm-mm. Who cares about the police if you're hot waiting beside you? Mm. Wait, okay. Aside from her being a pretty lady, I think Sly would also be like prideful and want to solve everything on his own. Um, I wonder how people, how they keep the demons sealed. Maybe people? I'm sure it's probably unrelated though. Hmm, hmm. Let's, okay, I'm gonna let Sly's pride win. I'll say he'll think about it. Melody nods. I understand uh, that you have a lot to consider. I don't want to pressure you, but there's only so much time before people start to forget Larissa altogether. Tomorrow, go speak to the police. Once you've spoken to them, I'm confident that you'll realize that only you and I can solve this. After finishing your tea, you take your leave and head to the head the short distance to your lodgings. Oh, ooh, time! Wait, I just realized there's time. Okay. The building you arrive at is an old cramped home sandwiched between two similarly bleak houses. Is it 12 a.m.? I presume it's probably 12 a.m. Considering, you know, it's nighttime. Yeah. <clears throat> As per the instructions, you find the key taped to the inside of a small mailbox beside the front door. Letting yourself in, the air inside feels musty and the walls drab. You're just thankful you don't have to carry your bags around anymore. <clears throat> the narrow home has a kitchen in the hallway downstairs, and a larger room upstairs serving us both bedroom and study. Are these our notes? Or are these like notes from somebody else? As you make your way upstairs... You find the room is already filled with someone else's things. Oh? Roomy? Roomy? Hang on, wait, hide. Alright, we've got like a flask over there, a, a picture frame over there, alright, some notes and stuff, okay. Oh, wait, oops, I didn't mean to open the inventory. Although, with the layer of dust atop of most of it, it's clear it's not been used recently. No, Roomy, this is so sad. A set of police-issued boots stand in the middle of the room. A radio set, seemingly in disrepair, sits by the only real window. Oh, if we were a technician, maybe we could probably fix it. Oh, man. And various odd-looking books stack- lay stacked up near the corner of the room. Um, hmm. Let's... I mean... Oh, we can summon Alistair! <laughs> Wait, we can summon him later. Wait, no, what if we miss the chance to? Wait, we can save. We can always save, so... Let's save over this. Yes. Oh. Yes. There we go. Um... Let's... Let's... You know what? Mm. Yeah, let's, let's investigate the boots first, then. You walk over and examine the boots in the middle of the room. Oh! It's like failed! Oh god, that's a two! That's painful! Dear god! Strange. Perhaps one of the local police officers stayed here last. You should mention this tomorrow if you head to the station. Why did they just leave all these things here? There's nothing else to go for on for now. You push. Th- Wait. To go on for now, you push them up against the wall, out of the way. 
You turn your attention elsewhere in the room. Let's let's investigate the books. Okay. You walk over and examine the stack of books in the corner of the room. They range in topics and styles, but all seem relatively short. You look through a few of them, checking for any kind of clue as to who left them here. Almost all of them are from a personal from a personal collection, and judging from their covers, these seem to be from the mainland. Whoever left them here was likely not from the island. Wait! Wait! Head cannon! Head cannon! It's us! This is not our first time here! It's us! I don't know, we'll see. You turn your attention elsewhere in the room. Uh, investigate the radio set. You walk over and examine the damaged radio set. set. It's strange. It almost looks like if, as if it's been dismantled purposely rather, rather than accidentally. You try to turn it on, but nothing happens. Giving up, you turn your attention to the window. It looks out over a large portion of Lower Malagry. In the dim light, you can make out the docks from where you arrived. And of course, beyond that, the lighthouse. Something about it draws your eyes. A moment later, you blink, breaking out of your trance. You turn your attention elsewhere in the room. All right, it's time to bring out our buddy, Alistair. Come here, boy. Let's go. You clear some space on the floor and ready the summoning ritual. <laughs> oh, you know, just typical investigator things. Tee! Lighting the five candles that make up the newly drawn pentagram, you begin to chant. Shroom. <coughs> oh god, I. <coughs> My throat. One of the candles blows out. Shroom, 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 shroom. <laughs> Sorry. For a second, you see a spinning demon floating in place. Then, as quickly as it arrived, it darts into nearby desk. Oh, it's so tiny! The desk drawer slides a jar. Ah, boss. Was wondering when you'd do that. Say, this is quite the downgrade, huh? Couldn't you find a better place than this? <laughs> mm, time to put <laughs> time to put Alistair in the jar. Shut up, demon. What? I thought you'd love this place. Um I feel like Sly would say this option, the middle one. Oh yeah. You're right, the gray really suits my color scheme. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a joke, but it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, considering me. <laughs> Plus, I bet the mold here tastes great. Gotta say though, the magic, magic sure is thick here. Please don't eat the mold again? Again? Um, I'm going to need your skills tomorrow looking for anything strange. Um... I want to pick this option, but I feel like Sly would say, you know, I need you, I need you to do work. Oh my god. Um. Hmm. Sure, let's go with that one. Boss, it might be easier to tell you first what isn't strange, but I'll try my best to find the most interesting stuff. He's so cute. He's so tiny, baby. I love him. <laughs> You watch as the jar slowly slides shut. You shake your head a little, but you know they are ultimately harmless. You've known the demon for some time now and have gotten used to some of their quirks. One of which is that they dislike being seen directly, although you're not sure why. Either way, they don't eat much and are very useful when bound to you. At least, as long as the mainland doesn't find out. You turn your attention elsewhere in the room. Time to eat me bye, good night. Feeling exhausted, you tr decide to try, um, get some rest. As you change out of your clothes and test your new bed, you quickly find yourself falling into a deep sleep. Okay, we wake up at- Oh! Nicely settled, go to sleep at the end of the first day. Nice, we got an achievement. When you awake, light streams through your window. It's 7am. 7am, waking up in the morning, <laughs> gotta get fresh, gotta go down. <laughs> As you pull yourself from your bed and get ready, you listen to the people going about their morning business outside. You hear busy footsteps, distant chatter, clanging from construction, and, of course, the sound of the birds. Today is your first chance to get a proper grasp on what's happening here. Pulling out your map, you look for places of interest. It's time to decide where to investigate. Ooh, ooh, map, map, map! Map, map, map! 
Yeah, map, map, maps. <laughs> Ooh, oh, it consumes time. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you can visit the gardens. Something strange, something about the strange magical gardens calls to you. What secrets do they hide? This one is one hour. Visit the painter, painter's house. After being told about the painter, you decided. Oh, from grandma. If we didn't talk to grandma, we wouldn't know about this. <laughs> Visit the police station. The police should know what's going on with this case. I should go and see them. <laughs> well, in the interest of being efficient, I say... Wait, no. If we go here, it's probably going to take like three hours to get to the police station or three hours to get to the gardens, right? Um, unless it's closer this way? I don't actually know. Mm hmm Okay, so if we visit the police station, that's like it'll be nine. Nine AM. Same with the garden. Um Painter you know what? Uh I feel like the painter probably wouldn't be awake at seven AM. Let's let's go to you know what? Probably stays open later than the rest, maybe. Uh, if you have an unknown length of time before people forget the girl, time really is of the essence, that's true. Then in that case, maybe... Okay, yeah, police station, police station. You know, we've, we've got to flaunt our investigator title. Let, let's go, let's go. Okay, maybe I should have saved. I, I probably should have saved. All right. You decide it's time to head over to the police station. All right, well, I might, I might as well save it at this point, you know? Okay. As you walk through the streets, the mist curls beneath your feet and the, scry the sky grows gray and dreary. Eventually, you find yourself in front of a large building. Its front facade is adorned with intricate glasswork and a placard presenting the building's name. The Old Malagry Constabulary. As you look the building over, you notice that despite its showy intricacy, the glasswork is uncared for. I just remembered something, guys. Um, Gilded Rune Games is a UK-based game studio team. And I just remember that Constabulary is a very British term. <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to... Uh, sorry, sorry. Like, um, cause, um, the only times I've heard it being used is when I'm playing Professor Layton. <laughs> I really like the Professor Layton games, and I I believe it's set in something adjacent or in to London or something. Do we have to pitch Kilia to translate for you? No, it's okay. I learned I learned from her. Um, this is Peng. <laughs> this game is Peng. <laughs> That's how you use it, right? <laughs> Confused American noise. I'm not even American. How do you think I'm gonna fare? <laughs> uh, it's fine. You're part British. Super, super removed, though. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, no. I've confused them. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. Mold builds up along the cracks and edit Along its cracks and edges. The constabulary's gilded door handle seems to be the only thing not covered in dirt or grime. Someone you're in a British just knows, guys, no, 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 no. I'm not going to embarrass myself in front of a dev. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Unless you can convince me to, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> it almost looks out of place. Opening the door, you head inside. The cavernous open plan space inside is far from what you're used to back on, back on the mainland. Ooh, okay, neat, neat. Let's let's appreciate the art. Let's let's hide the, the text box for a bit. Very cool, very cool. Okay. Do it, Bao Bao. <laughs> Give it no. <laughs> I mean they probably saw your other stream. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh <clears throat> oh, oops. There we go. Thick with smoke and crammed with mismatched desks covered in paperwork, the space feels smaller than it should. A, part a partitioned office in the back corner just juts into the space. Which one? Partitioned office in the back corner, that one? Ah, okay. <clears throat> From here, you can only just read the name engraved on its door. Chief Brittle. Okay. Your presence in the station does not go unnoticed. Various heads turn to look at you 
as you examine the space. Oh no! I'm feeling self-conscious! Oh no. Wait, where is... Where's my mouse? Has it turned off again? I think my mouse has turned off again. Do I need to replace the battery? There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's continue. Oh! Oh! Roll! Roll! I passed! Yes! I'm smart enough! Oh, oh. I'm smart enough to know that they don't like me. <laughs> Hang on. Guys, this is Loki san from uh, Face Connects JP branch. Thank you so much for coming today. Kyo <laughs> な、なんだっけ?ビジュアルノブルを、あ、あそ、遊んでいます。はい、そうです。えっと、ゆっくり、ゆっくり私たちと一緒に休んでね。お願いします。So, <笑> break them um, up to you. Oh, by the way, guys, Loki san is amazing at singing and amazing at art. Uh, Loki san no utagoe to irasto めっちゃすごいんですよ。すごくすごいんですよ。ぜひ、えっと、ロキさんのチャンネルをチェックしてくださいね。Yes, please. So, please go subscribe and check out. Her art is amazing. Like, I legit, I am not kidding. Please do check. Yes. Sky is attempting to not embarrass yourself in front of a dev- <laughs> Fine! Fine! You want me to do it? Fine! Fine, I'll do it. Give me- give me a minute. The- the- the thing isn't working. I wanna- hello? Okay, let's just click to continue. The gazes linger for a moment, but the rising murmurs are cut short as they all turn towards a large figure emerging from the office. Is this the chief? Is this Chief Brittle? Brittle? <laughs> the man looks up, looks you up and down with a trained eye. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh god, uh, am, am I gonna do it? Fuck. Seeing as those boots are police issued and you're not one of my- <laughs> I can't do it! I can't do it! <laughs> Can I get a Moro or Killian here? <laughs> I can all I can only do a British accent when I'm copying Kilia. Like legit. <laughs> Cockney. <laughs> uh, I can't do it. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> I'm guessing that means you're from the mainland. <laughs> oh, he looks like someone will call you buddy, probably. Hello there, Chief Brittle. He pulls he pulls an old lighter from his pocket and lights up a cigar. <laughs> sorry! Why am I doing this? Oh god! I'm so sorry! <laughs> You're not from here for the spirit fair, are you? <laughs> I can't! I can't! <laughs> I'm gonna die! <laughs> Give him a super flippant- No, 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 no! Let's just- let's just speak normally, please! <laughs> <laughs> to everyone who who lives anywhere in the UK or you know oh my god I'm so sorry this is this is Australian accent all over again oh my god Miona <laughs> Miona thank you for the raid <laughs> oh my god hi Miona I hope you had a good stream what you stream today also guys say hello to Miona chat hi Sky hi Miona <laughs> you sound just like us <laughs> Uh, me and I, I'm embarrassing myself in front of the dev who made this game. I'm going to- I'm crying. <laughs> um, so hi for those of you who are new here. I'm Sky Shoot You and I totally can do a British accent. <laughs> uh, um, fuck, what can I say to convince them? Um, uh, I'm totally here for the spirit fair. <laughs> To totally. <laughs> Wait. Uh, <coughs> what was that? Oh my god. Oh no. I think I need more water. Uh, Jesus Christ. Did you hear that sound coming from my throat? 
I think it's because I have a bit of a cough, but anyway. The sound I kind of broke out of me. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should just do a, uh, wait, I can't even do a Brooklyn accent. Can I copy Zoomy? No, I can't copy Zoomy. I can't even do that. Jesus Christ. Let's, let's, let's not go there. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, let's, let's, let's cut to the chase, Boston. No, I'm here regarding the missing people. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can't do it. Ah, as I thought, good luck with that. <laughs> if one person could solve that case, I would have done it a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he casts his gaze down, and for a moment, you think you can't shame flickering behind his eyes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. Clearing his throat, he gives a tired gesture towards his office. Best we discuss this in, in there. <laughs> Noticing the lack of scribbling pens, he turns his attention to the other officers. What's wrong, boys? <laughs> Trouble working? There's always that case down on the dock for those feeling uninspired. <laughs> okay, okay, let's stop. I think that's, I'm so sorry to anyone who lives there, like with the Brooklyn or Boston accent. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> you're switching between Boston and Aussie. <laughs> Um, I don't even do an Aussie accent. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say the C word a lot if I do that, though. The room suddenly seems much more motivated and the scribbling resumes. As the office door clicks shut behind you, a small smile pulls at the edges of this otherwise gruff expression. <sighs> Ignore the lads in there. Oh shit, oh no, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. <laughs> How do you do an Australian accent? Fuck, I, like, I can tell the difference between the two, but I can't do either. Uh, ignore the lads in there. They're all good folk, just sitting on edge with all the troublemakers arriving from offshore for the fair. He makes his way over to a large worn desk, sitting himself down on the chair behind it and exhaling a cloud of smoke. Behind him sits an old, Oil painting depicting a calm seaside beach. Right then, about your case. <laughs> We've dealt with missing person cases before. What makes this one so problematic is that everyone seems to forget the victims. <laughs> mm, you're doing Oz decent the Aussie? And it's not just the victims. Information seems to slip through the cracks. Case files go missing, and anything we we think we find ends up getting going cold. Co cold. Is it cold? Cold is just not said normally, right? <laughs> All I know how to say is nor. <laughs> nor, nor, nor. Yeah, nor, yeah, nor, yeah. Yeah, nor. <laughs> yeah, nor, yeah. We don't know if we're dealing with one person or a group of people. What we do know is that the people who go missing are always pillars of the community. The good folk. The ones that make this island very well. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I totally, I totally get that. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh god. Let's let's just let's just do this normally. Yeah. After done, after we're done with Chief Brittle, 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 I need to get water. I need to get water. Oh man. We've lost doctors, politicians, parents, teachers, engineers, even officers. And I couldn't tell you the name of any bloody one of them. <sighs> it sounds so bad to say bloody and lads and an American accent. I feel like I'm committing a grave sin. Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Really, what makes this challenging is the clear abuse of the arcane that's going on. <clears throat> If we had a half-decent arcane authority, we wouldn't be in this mess. Ah. Don't get mad, Chief Brittle! <laughs> he slams his fist down on the desk with a frustrated scowl before letting out a deep sigh. That witch is too young. She can barely manage the seal in the lighthouse, let alone some shadowy killer. <laughs> I think she's trying her best. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> What's the seal on the lighthouse? What's the best lead you have? Um... Bloody air. <laughs> uh, that's a realistic stamp. It is, it is. Oh man. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let me see. What do we ask about first? Um, what's the seal on the lighthouse? Yeah. 
Best you stay out of that. It's old business and definitely unrelated. That was all sorted out back in the arm, back in armless Gorin's day, when we had a real arcane authority. Damn, dude, just let her try. Oh my, oh no, my throat's getting, <coughs> oh no, my throat's getting raspy. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> the old arcane authority quite literally put himself into his work. Put himself into his work? Did he become a seal? Oh no, oh no. Um. <clears throat> I think she's trying her best. You're right, she seems underskilled. I don't even know what she does, so... I think she's trying her best. And that's my problem. If this is her best, then we're in trouble. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I've got someone else working for me who's, who's filling in the gaps as we speak. Anything else? What's the best lead you have? <coughs> he takes a puff from his cigar and gives you a serious look. With one hand, he opens a desk drawer, slapping a case file onto the desk in front of you. This file contains the rundown of the latest victim, Larissa pa Patrian. She's a strange case, the, not the normal community figure, but I guess that can only mean she was going to be important. From what I understand, her academic scores were exceptional and she was a notable figure amongst her peers. The only thing the victims leave behind are their shoes. <gasps> Somebody got ghosted away in our room! Somebody got ghosted away in our room! Oh no! We're not entirely sure why, but we're hoping whoever is behind this will slip up and leave some kind of trail to follow. Whether that's DNA or some kind of magical trace. He snuffs out what, a, what of what remains of his cigar on a small ashtray. What's left of the family is refusing to give up the shoes for sentimental reasons. They won't talk to anyone from the police. If you want me to help you, bring me those shoes. Otherwise, there's nothing I can, I can do that we haven't tried a million times before. You'll probably need this. He flips the front of the file open and pulls out a search warrant from within its front pages. Rising from his seat, he makes his way over to the door to let you out. You pull the case file forwards and carefully tuck it into your belongings before joining him. We got it. Obtained. Police warrant. Woohoo! All right. As you start to move out of the office door, he pauses. One last thing. You're not the first mainland investigator to come here. Keep that in mind. I can't remember the name of the last one. Oh, and the witch here can't be trusted. She is likely also after the same shoes you are. Make sure you bring them to me. You let the reality of what you're taking on sink in as you make your way out of the station. I have a feeling that each time we die, we get spirited away on this island and our shoes are left behind. I'm pretty sure that is our room. I am like, I'm 90% I'm sure. If it isn't, that's that's gonna be an even bigger twist. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, okay, we're done with that section. Now, what I think we should be doing is I need water. The fake J's. They must be Jordans. Oli is called Armless Gorn. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Wait, hang on. I will put us on the BRB screen because I really do need that water. So give me a moment. I will be back. Returned. Thank you very much for the blue super chat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thanks. I can't see. Wait to see what choices are made soon. Oh, <laughs> I wonder how much it affects the game. Honestly, that was fast. Yeah, I just need to refill my water and then you know uh, drink a little bit. So let's see. Um, oops, I accidentally clicked out of the game. 
how, how do we go about this? All right, so there's the painter. Go see the doctor. Spade pharmaceuticals. The doctor might be able to help me if I get hurt or sick. Do I still have? Do I still have a headache? Um, I feel like it would be good to hang on. I kind of want to read into my current sickness. Like, how bad is it? Does it get worse? Police warrant. Acquisition of Larissa Patrain's Petr shoes. Um. Wait, is it Patrain or is it Pat Patrian? Huh. The warrant seems pretty basic, though you doubt anyone will look at this too closely. Grants plus one sagacity bonus. Okay. I think we should go see the doctor so I can <laughs> I can have not negative one intelligence. You know? No, she's... <laughs> I'm not. All the current Steam reviews are recommendations. Nice. Mm -mm -mm. While walking along the street, you notice a shop with an old worn hanging sign. It reads, Spade Pharmaceuticals. A small bell jingles as you open the door and head inside. Also, wait, did I properly thank you guys for the blue super chat? Smokey Joe and Edge, thank you very much for that. Thank you, thank you. At first, you don't notice anyone behind the counter. Uh, anybody behind the counter. Only rows and rows of bottles of various shapes and sizes. That's so many. Just so many. Do you guys know how long it takes to make backgrounds like these? And with identifiable, like, items per, you know, per thing? It's hard. I have slaved away at this stuff. Huh. Is there anything on the ground in front of us? No. It's still very cool, though. Can we... Oh, snap. How do we go back to show? How do we... There we go. <laughs> okay. Ugh. There. Behind one of the bottles is a goopy, uh, a goopy dark mass lingers. A familiar set of eyes warped by the glass. Is it Alistair? Boss, there's something funky coming from the back of this place. He's so cute! Aww. Some kind of weird magic. You're about to ask more when, from the back of the shop floor, uh, sorry, from the back of the shop floor, you hear footsteps. Oh no. He seems kind of sus. He seems a little scary. Ah, a customer. How fascinating. Oh no, he's gonna experiment on me! Dr. Craymore Spade. What ails you on this fine day? Before you is a thin, lanky man, hair draped over a lab coat and a smile slightly too wide resting on his face. He stands with his hands awkwardly crossed, as though he doesn't know what to do with them. <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm slashing you! <laughs> Uh, I'm an investigator who's been sent by the mainland to help find the missing people. Can you tell me anything? Um, I don't know if I want to tell him my name. He's a little scary. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask for meds. Uh, ah, you must be a new arrival. The mist that you sailed through has some faint neurological effects. You can expect disorientation and, in some extreme cases, mild memory loss. It should pass on its own within two or three days. He taps his fingers on the counter as if playing a piano that you can't see. Although, I have a syrup that can aid recovery if you'd prefer. The doctor plucks a small brown bottle from the shelf behind him. He hesitates before putting it on the counter. If you'll stay a while and talk to me, it's on the house. Oh, um, intellect pass! I'm smart enough! You notice concern in his eyes. By fulfilling your request, he's worried you might leave. Huh. You suspect he's very lonely? Oh, Sure, I have some questions for you anyway. He brightens up instantly. He pr proffers the bottle and you take a quick sip. Feeling your mind clear immediately, you sigh in relief. D you didn't check the bottle? You didn't ask what it was? Sly! <laughs> Sly! Lost. Missed sickness. Good. Can I help you with anything more? Do you practice magic? No! <laughs> I'm not the largest fan of magic, you see. When you weigh it up, it takes more from society than it gives. Solemnly, he looks to the countertop. Instead, I practice the sciences, which is an arcane in its own way. Which is arcane in its own way. Why do you ask? I can sense something odd from the coming from the back of your shop. Mmm. Sly is dumb enough to say this. You, you can? Th there's nothing back there. Sweat begins to beat on his forehead. I can't talk about it. You can't talk about the nothing? 
Correct. You stare at each other for an awkwardly long moment. Um, vigor very easy. I'm an investigator from the mainland. Tell me what's back there. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, baby, let's go. Hasn't the police chief already told you? Look, I'm not allowed to tell anyone what's back there. But I'll tell you that it's related to the missing persons case. Actually, the chief told me I could look. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Okay, nice, 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 nice. Very well. Come with me. If the chief said it's okay, then I, I guess you can see. You're led around the counter and into the back of the shop. Here you see various bookshelves and a desk in the back. Behind that, another door. This one made of metal. It's through here. Opening the metal door, you see on several shelves, neat rows of shoes. On one side of the room, a small workspace has been set up for examining them, it seems. A wave of dread and sadness washes over as over you as the shoes seem to suppress your other emotions. Insanity! Normal! <laughs> Insanity! Let's freaking go! Yeah, let's go crazy! Let's go crazy! Let's go stupid! Yes! Insanity failed! Shit, never mind! <laughs> you stare at the shoes, their presence boring back into you. A hand on your shoulder pulls you back to your senses and back into the room. But you feel a piece of you remain. Plus one insanity! Yeah! Yippee! You know, it never hurts to be a little cray cray, you know? You know, it's the spice of life, you know? I knew this was a bad idea. Are you okay? Those things have fermented into some kind of evil that I don't understand. Why can't I just ask Alistair to do this for me? You've got to be careful while you're in there. Otherwise, you'll lose yourself. Can I help you with anything more? Um... You know what? I, I, I give you my name, Doctor. You're, you're not so bad after all. You're, you're all right. He shuffles behind the counter. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sly Shinyu. My name is Claymore Spade. My brother and I run this- Oh, you have a brother. I do hope we can be of an assistance. I've missed people coming here. He glances down at the wooden counter, awkwardly clearing his throat. <clears throat> can I help you with anything more? Um... Is your brother around? No. He's gone. One of the victims of the... Well... Just one of the victims. I miss him greatly. Oh, Dr. Spade! Aww. Can I help you with anything more? Um, can you tell me anything? <clears throat> the good doctor perks up, suddenly seeming quite enthusiastic. Really? I... My brother went missing. I was the one who found his shoes. At the time, I didn't know their worth. I've been trying to find him ever since. Or whatever remains of him. Can I help you with anything more? Sorry, Doc. I don't got nothing else. Ah, please come by again soon. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Um, so we've done that. Let's... Do we have enough time to do both, I wonder? Let's visit the painter's house, sure. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it's the old lady! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, that, was, that, that surprised me a little bit. As you wander through the peaceful streets of Upper Malagry, you spot an older woman banging frantically at the door of one of the houses. She turns to look at you, panic in her eyes. You recognize her. You met her on the boat. I think my grandson is inside. I can smell a fire. I can't open the blasted door. As you get closer, you too begin to smell the smoke. Um, I don't have time. Uh, uh, break down door. Let's go, come on. I'm beefy. Fuck, I'm not beefy enough. You slam your shoulder against the door once, twice, three times, four times. It's hopeless. The door refuses to budge. Um, Ma'am, do you have any spare keys? Am I smart enough? No, I'm not smart enough either! You try to ask the old woman where his grandson might keep a spare key. She glares at you, panic overwhelming her. If there were spare keys, I wouldn't be trying to knock this door down! Fuck. Um... Search for keys anyway. Try to... Um... Shit, guys. Um... Help. <laughs> what do you think I should do? Keys? 
<laughs> Let me, or, or, break it down. Too bad chest can a skylight smash. Plus, they're both plus two. Um, 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 uh, um, do you feel lucky? Yes, okay. Come on, come on, come on. He's he's fucking dead! Oh my god, dude is fucking dead! Oh no! <laughs> Ignoring her, you begin to knock over various pot plants that sit outside the door. You scrabble around in the ceramic debris, panic rapidly rising. A quick slap from the old woman reminds you with reality. You fool! What is ah! Oh no! Spraying glass and embers over both you and the old woman. I didn't mean to skip that by the way. Did I accidentally skip that? Wait, what did what did she say? I don't know. With a sickening wail, you watch as the roof collapses and the fire claims the building for good. My boy! She weeps into her hands. You reach out to console her, but she pushes you away. People emerge from the surrounding buildings, some with buckets full of water, others calling out for help. You feel powerless. With so many rushing to help, and you think it's best to leave. Reading log? I think there is a reading log. Um, scene log. Um, yeah, we don't have time. I guess it did get automatically caught, cut off. No, the painter! No! This is so sad. Man. Can I go to, can I go to like the pub and have a drink and wallow in my sorrows? Visit the victims. Upper Malagree, it's time to visit the victims. Hopefully you can get their daughter's shoes amicably. Available until 1800 hours. What time is that? That's... That's like 6 p.m., right? How about this one? Also same time. Um... I... <laughs> yeah, sorry, 6 p.m., yeah. I guess we have time. It's still morning. So... Sure, let's let's go visit the victims. Oh boy. I don't feel so good. Making your way further inland to the more elevated parts of Malagree, you notice something different about the buildings here. They take on more modern designs that remind you of the mainland. The shadows don't loom as much, and you find yourself in awe of the view from here. But as you approach the victim's house, signs of more sinister times start to make themselves known. <clears throat> The remains of shrines dedicated to the missing. Oh no. Before long, you find one with candles still lit and flowers yet wilted. A wreath of flowers encircles a picture frame of an older teenage girl. The face matches the one you've seen in your case file, Larissa Patrian. The house beside the shrine is the one you've been sent to find. Hey boss, do you see that? Fools left that window open up there in the attic for anyone to just slip inside. If you want to sneak in without anyone knowing, that's the best, I bet. You nod. It's not exactly ethical, but the demon isn't wrong either. The shoes must be inside the building, no matter what. No matter what, you need them. Um. Hmm. They probably wouldn't want... I like our little demon. Yeah, he's a, he's a good little goober. I like him. I want... I want to pick him up in my hands and squish him. <laughs> um, okay, what would Sly do here? While he is proud, I feel like he'd also think that, well, oh, they probably won't, you know, cooperate with us. Um, hmm. You know what? Sure, let's go with mainland investigator, why not? You see an older man with white hair poke his head around the door. He looks at you with confusion. You say you're an investigator from the mainland. Does that mean you're independent from the police here? I'm conducting my own investigation. <laughs> Something small appears on his face and seemingly grows as he turns back to call for his wife. You think it's hope. Isabel, there's an investigator here from the mainland. The door is open wide for you, and through it, you see an older woman emerging from a small room. An investigator? Looking for Larissa? How can we help? How can we help? She hurries you. She hurries to help you inside. Please, come in. You're shown inside the house. Its white carpet floors are soft, and ornate paintings adorn the walls. Yet, there is something missing here. 
You're taken to a sitting room and offered a seat. Both Mr. and Mrs. Patron wait, watch you expectantly. What do you need to know? Um... What can you tell me about your daughter? The older woman's eyes fill with sadness. She was caring, loving, smart, and now she's gone. My precious girl is gone. Mr. Patron rubs his wife's arm and takes a deep breath. She was, she was the head of the student union at her university. Very bright girl. All of the professors knew her well and got along with her. When she came back for the holidays, she was so happy but so busy with her work. She barely had time to go out. She was loved by so many people. I have no idea who'd do her harm. Anything else, investigator? Mmm. When did you last see her? There is a tense pause. The older man seems pained by how he has to strain his memory to answer you. I think it was the day before she went missing? That's right. We had left on an outing, but she was too busy to come with us. She had so much coursework. If only I'd persuaded her to come. She was all alone. Aww. The woman pulls out a handkerchief, hands trembling. She dabs at her eyes, turning away for a moment. When we got back, we knew something was wrong the moment we opened the door. We didn't know what it was, but... When we found the shoes... He looks over to the corner of the room where a pair of white shoes sit undisturbed. We'd read about the disappearances. We know other victims and knew what had happened. Anything else, investigator? Mm. Are you heading somewhere? We're leaving the island. We simply can't bear to be here any longer. And the spirit fair... Something about it just makes us uncomfortable. Anything else, investigator? Why do you think she was targeted? No idea. It's not like she had many secrets or even any enemies. She was just a girl. A girl whose bright future was snuffed up by someone or something. He looks to the side, fists bawling in frustration. No thanks to the police. If they had caught the culprit by now, our girl would still be here. Mrs. Patron reaches forward and touches her husband's shoulder. He seems to settle down again. Anything else? Can you show me the shoes? The old man gives a somber smile. You're trying to take them too, huh? The police have been after them, but but they've done they've not done anything for anybody. If I give them to you, can you promise that you'll be able to find my girl? Ooh! I'm not going to lie. I am the great Sly Shinryu. I can do it. Let me let me just say. <laughs> I can do it. Let me just save. I promise. Swallowing, he nods. Good. I'm glad, because you're our last hope. If you can't find her, then I fear nobody ever will. Saves come. It's a visual novel. It's normal. You pick up the shoes and make your way towards the door. Before you leave, you hear the old man's voice again. If you break your promise, I will curse you. Oh, no. You know he isn't lying. You make your way out onto the street. Obtained? Why choose? Troubling discovery. Pick up an item which gives insanity? Oh, no. It's the it's the feet smell. It's, it's getting to me, guys. It's the feet smell. Oh, no. White shoes. Plant plus two aura bonus. That's a big bonus. Plus one insanity bonus. A simple pair of small white shoes belonging to Larissa Patrain. A gift from her mother. These shoes are the last things their family has left of their missing child. The shoes now bear an un unmistakably evil aura that seems to grow as you watch them. Something is terribly wrong. Going crazy over the feet. <laughs> feet? <laughs> uh, everybody perked up at that, huh? All right. Um... All right, let's see. Um, where to next? Give the shoes to the police. You got the shoes. Give the shoes to Melody. You got the shoes. Hopefully, Melody gets something. Can find something that the police couldn't see. Mm. Do I have?
have to give them now. I guess there's no time limit considering there's no one. Uh, let's go to the gardens! Considering it, apparently there's some weird stuff going on over there. So, okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Tree! <laughs> Sorry. You find yourself drawn to the center of Malagree, an endless sprawling park made from a collection of verdant gardens. The moment you set foot over its boundary, you feel an immense power. An ancient natural power. You follow one of the gravel pathways, occasional lampposts sporting flyers for the spirit fair. Before long, the garden envelops you. Green plant life spreads out before you in every direction. I love touching grass. As you con continue down the path, you come, you come upon a grassy meadow, flattened by many feet. The skeleton frameworks of tents and stalls are scattered inside a wide enclosure. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh. Marking the entrance, a banner, already adorned with lights, reads, The Malagree Spirit Fair. Mm. You're here to investigate a missing person case? <laughs> oh my god. Mm. You know, let's explore... Like, we know what the fair is. Mm -hmm. What is the fair about? Let's, fine, let's go check it out. Ah! <laughs> Hoopstiff! Hoopstiff! You make your way towards the entrance when suddenly a large man blocks your path. On his face, he wears a white mask with one golden dot above his eye. Chadwin! <laughs> Chadwin! Fairground guard, a fellow himbo? I hope so. Fine day, in it. <laughs> Sorry. How can I help you? His voice is oh, his voice is smooth as honey and soft, soft as silk. Oh wait. Ahem. Arms bearing gargantuan muscles burst from a sleeveless white vest. He looks like he could lift a tree with one hand. Uh, wow, you're checked. No, can I help you? I'm here for the spirit fair. Um. What would Sly say? Mm, Sly is a bit of a Captain Obvious, so... <laughs> I could see why the devs thought of Skyrim. <laughs> you think? You think so? Sure, let's say while you're jacked. He crosses his arms. While I appreciate your admi admiration, I must endeavor to ask. What is your purpose for being here? Sorry, sir! Sorry, Sir Chadwin! <laughs> Do you own a stall? At the fair, <laughs> hold me! <laughs> oh no, I don't. <laughs> Wait, I want to give Chat the option to pick. <laughs> Wait, where's my mouse? Is my hang on? Where's my mouse? Is it up? Is it up? Is it moving? Hello, mouse. Do I actually need another battery? No, we're good. Hang on. Don't think a sky act. Just think a sly. Uh, <laughs> I only see one option. Okay, if it's if it's Sly, you know what the people want? No, I don't know what the people want. I'm not a mind reader here. Um, don't uninstall. Hold me. I'll give you guys this one. I'll give you guys this one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so now we have six votes. Seven votes, all right, feel free to pitch in what you want to pick for this. Oh my god. I never clicked on a ball so fast before. <laughs> oh man. We know what must be done. Oh man. 100% <laughs> ball, easy. Oh, it's no longer 100%. Oh, oh, but you know what? Oh, okay, okay, we got 21 votes. Can we get to 30? Do you guys want to get to 30? Oh my god. By the way, um, this game has an integrated Twitch voting system. So um, if you play or stream this on Twitch, you can do like polls in game without having to like do a separate one here, uh, like on YouTube, for example. So 27, a couple of people have misclicked. You know, what? I think that's enough. We've got like 29 votes. That that's enough for me. All right, you guys. Here we go. Wait, should I save? I, th I think I think I'll save. Yeah, hold me. He looks you up and down, then envelops you bravely in his arms. <laughs> Plus one bigger. Ayo! 
Hey, yo! Oh, I see Sly is invigorated by that. Okay, okay, worth it. So worth it. So absolutely worth it. I hope that brought you satisfaction. Now, will you answer my inquiry? You listen to his words, still reeling from the most satisfying hug you've ever experienced. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't expect him to actually agree. Oh my god. Oh, we're satisfied plenty. Who doesn't want to be embraced by a himbo? You're right. Sorry. <clears throat> of course. I'm just here to check out I'm just here to check out the fairground. Ah, excellent. Unfortunately, the spirit fair only open to the public tomorrow. <laughs> Unless you are a tent or a stall owner of force. Well, I've got a tent pitching elsewhere. <laughs> Sly's got a tent pitching elsewhere, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man. In the interim, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. He curls his biceps invitingly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. God, I love this. Um, hmm. oh, where will you be? <laughs> uh, let me see. Any advice for someone's first time at the Spirit Fair? You know, uwu, uh, first timer's advice, uwu. Indeed, I would recommend acquiring one of Quinlan's signature masks. With the amount of magic being utilized tomorrow, mental shielding is recommended. And there is no better mental shielding than these masks. If you head there today, you might still be able to put in a custom order. He leans down, placing a hand in front of his mask, as if to whisper, Tell him Chadwin sent you, and he'll surely give you your first mask at no expense. Ayo? Ayo? Okay, alright. His name may be Chadwin, but we're the ones winning. F focus on oh Chad, Chad being down bad. <laughs> his biceps invite further questions. Um... What can I find at the Spirit Fair? I'm delighted you asked. The Spirit Fair is a menagerie of arcane wonders. Each year, practitioners of magic gather from far and wide to celebrate the zenith of Malagri's power. There'll be vendors, shows, food, a good time for anyone with an arcane mind. This year's fair will be the biggest and most marvelous in its history. His biceps invite further questions. Um, where will you be? Tomorrow? I'll be helping with the security at the front, but later on the evening I have a show! Should you feel so inclined? <laughs> Guys! <laughs> oh man, this reminds me of this one um, d and campaign I had with a friend. He had like a little fair going on, like a traveling circus of sorts, and apparently like there's this one tent that you could go into, but it's like a lap dance show. I, I don't know if this is the kind of show that he's having, okay, but I'm just getting these vibes. And there's like a really hot lady, and like three of our party members were there. Only my character rolled a nat 20 wisdom check against her, but the rest, one of them came his pants, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> I'll be in one of the back chats. Oh no! The one with the symbol of huge arms out front. Oh no, this does not this does not spell well. This does not this does not spell well. Oh god. Okay, um what can you tell me about the history of the Spirit Fair? Well well, the Spirit Fair has always taken place here in the center of Malagree's power. The city itself sits along the ley line, you see, which brings it enormous strength. But this spirit fair was initially an, an attempt to contact things beyond the veil, but it has long since evolved into a simple celebration of magic. For contacting such beings is a foolish undertaking, bound to cause only suffering. His biceps invite further questions. Thank you, you've been most helpful. I do hope to see you tomorrow. You return to the meadow. Time to explore the gardens! As you wander further into the gardens, a feeling of calm washes over you. In this part of the gardens, brightly colored exotic plants release soothing scents. You start to lose track of time, meandering through the endless gardens. You eventually find a peaceful pond teeming with fish and surrounded by flowers. Taking a second to enjoy the moment, you relax on a shady bench, perfectly placed to overlook the pond. A discreet plaque on the backrest reads, GNU TP, 
A man is not dead while his name is still spoken. Mm -hmm. For a moment, you ponder on the words. Oh, am I smart enough? Oh, I, I'm, sm I'm, I'm, I'm magic -y enough. You spot a glint of something metallic. Reaching down, your hand grazes something cold. You pull up a black mask that was nettled, nestled beneath the bench. Oh no! If if a uh, lethal company has taught me anything, do not wear it. The mask itself is adorned with small silver bells on its sides. Obtained black bell mask. You stash it carefully within your bag. Let's check it out. Hmm, interesting. Kind of, kind of cute. Kind of cute. A strangely chilling mask with a solemn design. Several silver bells hang from the mask. Each pro produces a peculiar lack of noise. Huh. A small maker's mark on the inside of the mask shows a picture of a turtle. The mask itself seems ceremonial, but its true purpose is unknown to you. Plus two luck bonus. Okay. Alright. Cool. Cool. Um, saves come. <laughs> you spend a few more seconds looking into the pond. Shaking off the garden's tranquilizing influence, you stand up and head back the way you came. You return to the meadow. Let's... yeah, let's leave the park. I am glad that we didn't die. <laughs> Feeling oddly refreshed, you reluctantly walk back to the city. <clears throat> Alright, so now we have a few other options. The Magic Bazaar. You have been told where to order a mask for the upcoming spirit fair. Give the shoes to Melody, or give the shoes to the police station. Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, bit of a tough choice. Or do I want to get a mask first? Wait, I need, I need, I need a sip of water. One second. Praise the dog. <laughs> the luck bonus would have been nice during the fight. Mm, don't remind me. Don't remind me. Mm. Look, man, I should have been able to knock that thing down, I swear. Um, also, the stat points at the beginning, like only having five, um, kind of balances out with the amount of items that you get, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Mm. But I guess this game probably does reward you for adventuring a bit more before doing things, perhaps. Should I go to the bazaar? Yeah, you know what? Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still thinking about that hug, guys. <laughs> in search of the bazaar, you quickly lose your way in the labyrinth, the labyrinthine alleys of Lower Malagry. As you stroll down yet another weaving passageway, you happen upon a sign marking the shop's entrance. Unlike the other wooden signs around, this one is much more elegant. A large carving of a mask. Oh, ding! Pushing your way inside, you hear a deep ring as the door pushes open. You find rows and rows of oddities. Most of them look handcrafted, but some seem imported from the mainland. Near the store counter itself, a display showing various exotic mask designs sits for all to see. Also, I think the game's gotten a little loud, like the music feels a bit loud, or is it just me? Let's lower the... Audio settings. Oh, actually, yeah, that's that's good. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> it doesn't feel louder. It does to me though. Um, wait, one sec. There's, what is that? Oh, never mind. Okay. Near the store counter itself, a display showing. Oh yeah, sorry, I already read that one out. <clears throat> As you arrive in front of the display, a voice speaks up from beside you. Fascinating, aren't they? Each one is unique, designed to fit the customer. And yet they all offer the same thing, protection. He turns slowly to look at the figure. He wears a gray shirt and carries various carving tools. Hmm, okay, okay. His face, similar to the display, is adorned by a mask. The mask is simple but elegant, carved from milky jade. Mi uh, from a milky jade. They smile and seat themselves behind the- <gasps> Flamrose! Thank you so much for the raid! Hi! Hello, hello! 
Oh my god, we've gotten quite a few raids today. Hello, thank you so much. We are currently reading through a visual novel that I have been graciously gifted a review copy by the devs themselves. Yes, hello. Miracle Tinkuru Raid. Hello, welcome. I hope you had a good stream. For those of you who are new, hi, I'm Sky Chenyu. Though Plumrose has raided into me quite a bit before, so thank you again. Thank you so much again kindly for raiding into me. Um... We have been um, basically caught up in this murder mystery of sorts. Well, rather than murder, a spirited away mystery kind of deal, you know? So we're trying to figure out um, what happened. <laughs> what happened? What was your stream, by the way? I hope you had a fun stream. And I hope you get to relax and chill here with us. Let me see. Um, so right now, we are trying to get a mask for his protection. Because apparently there's going to be a lot of magic going on at a spirit fair tomorrow. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. So his name is Kinlan. Kinlan? Kinlan. Welcome to the Bulwark Bazaar. My name is Kinlan. I deal in arcane trinkets, imports, and protection. Which one are you here for? Um... Ooh, ooh, wait... Uh, I, I want to ask questions, but I don't want to get locked out, so let's save here. Oh. <laughs> also, earlier we got the biggest hug from the beefiest himbo in the world. Oh, Breath of the Wild! Oh yeah, you've been having that as an ongoing series for a while now, right? What's uh, Good work. <laughs> um, let me see. Let's ask what he thinks about the Arc oh, Arcane Authority. Um, well, if I'm honest, I think she's got a lot on her plate at the moment. I'm happy to help, of course, but she's not willing to make any kind of deals with me. Excluding the purchase of my mask, that is. He sighs deeply before waving his hand dismissively. I'm sure she'll find a way to manage. But I can say from personal experience, when the community is on your side, it makes a big difference. Do ask another question. Um... What do you sell besides masks? Other than masks, I sell many arcane oddities, and occasionally, I import artifacts for various companies in Malagree. Everything above board, though. Everything's above board, though, I promise. The arcane authority is aware of every transaction I make, especially those that involve the mainland. Perhaps you're interested in trading something? No, thank you, I'm good. I don't have anything yet. Very well. Do ask another question. Um... I'd like to order mass. Chadwin sent me. He relaxes into his chair, looking you up and down. Of course. First masks are always free. My arcane protection is ultimately a community service, after all. I receive donations from some of the kinder folk from kinder folk around here. The ones who deem it important that all are safe. Considering everything that's been happening, everybody deserves protection, don't you think? I must note that the protection I offer is only for the mind. A knife will harm you just as it normally would. But should someone try to turn your brain into confetti, you won't be caught lacking. Hey, yo, we won't we won't be caught lacking. You heard the man. You heard the man. Sky, this is a horror. Mm, possibly, possibly, maybe. I I would bet on it, honestly. Yeah. And by the way, guys, please do check out if you are impressed with the game so far, with the with the visual novel. Do check out. Gilded Ruin Games, I have their website pinned in my top comment. And also, one of the devs is here in the chat as well. Yeah. We will never be unwise again, you write. I will never be caught being unwise. <clears throat> now, let me take a look at your face. He leans forward over the counter and, taking a hold of your chin, yeah! <laughs> turns your face to study it from every angle. Satisfied, he sits back down. Come back tomorrow morning before the spirit fair. I should have your mask ready by then. Would that suit you? Sounds perfect. Do ask another question. Did you make this one? You show him the blast mask that you found under the bench. Its small silvery bells jingle meekly. Hmm, fascinating. It seems like one of my designs, but I can't remember who I made this mask for. His shoulders drop. Unfortunately, whoever it was, they were dying. The mask paints the story of a tragedy. Cautiously, he hands it back to you. Be careful if you wear that to the fair. You don't know whose fate you're wearing. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Safe travels. You step out of the bazaar and back into the alleyways. Now you just need to remember your way out. Okay, alright. Now we only have 
two options left. And I think after this, this might be a good uh, place to like um, end the stream. Or maybe we can try and finish one route. Why won't it let me... Hello? Hmm? I want to. I want to overwrite. I, it's not letting me. <laughs> Hang on, let me just use my cursor. There we go. So now it's either give the shoes to Melody or give the shoes to the police. Um, I am actually very suspicious of Melody. Considering, um, you know, like... Her master sealed away a demon in the lighthouse, right? And now she's taking care of it. Um, Mel is kind of sus to me. I don't know if, you know, what she's doing is related to all of this, you know. It might, or maybe she's doing stuff behind the scenes. I don't know. Um, we already promised the police we'd give the shoes to them. And Sly is a man of his word, so maybe the demon eats shoes. No, I think the demon eats feet because the shoes are left behind, right? I mean, are we not worried about the demon? Yeah, that's the thing. But, uh... I am going to try and talk with the police. Well, let's let's go ahead and talk with the police. Let's see what happens. Maybe nothing will happen. Who knows? With the shoes in hand, you walk straight to the police station. As you reach its elaborate facade, you grasp the door's gilded handle. Pushing the door open, you head inside. The police chief is standing just inside. He turns to look at you as you enter. Back already? More importantly, did you bring the shoes? Yes, I got them. Her parents weren't very happy about it, though. For a moment, he seems impressed. I'm surprised you got anything at all out of them. The Patrains can be pretty stubborn. We've got a forensic consultant assisting us. He's going to... Hmm? He's going to run some tests on them. Hopefully, he'll be able to find something that we couldn't. Lost. White shoes, no! My aura! In the meantime, we've got some more pressing matters. We could really use an extra pair of hands. Namely, another incident down under the docks. With the Spirit Fair due to start tomorrow, it's got me worried. All of my guys are busy preparing for the fair or dealing with the missing persons cases. Mind lending a hand? Um... I'm, I'm an investigator, so you know what? Sure, this might be good. Sure, I'll take a look. He claps his hand on your shoulder, clearly relieved. Good, good. I appreciate that. Um, let me see. I mean, Melody's a trusting name? I don't know. Names are for friends, and we're not friends. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Reports suggest some kind of magical artifact has gone missing. Oh, oop. We suspect a break-in. The dock workers wanted us to come check it out. I'll have one of the boys get you, get you the case file. He waves a hand towards a younger officer. They exhale a large puff of smoke before snuffing their cigarette and riling through the, through the case files on their desk, eventually plucking out one and handing it to you. Man, this room probably smells like crazily like, like nicotine and cigarettes. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh! Sagacity passed! Thank God! <laughs> you get the feeling everyone around here has been putting off doing this case. Aha. Uh -huh. Although, you're not sure why. The officer gives you a little nod. Good luck, mate. <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> Let's see if you can get this done today. If you don't, I'll have to put one of the other lads up to it. You hear a series of quiet groans from the other officers. File now in your possession. You leave the police station. Hey, I want to read the file. Is it in my inventory? I don't think it was listed as in my inventory. It doesn't hurt to check. No, it's not. Okay. Ar Harbor's break. Harborside break in the docks. A warehouse on the harbor side has been broken into, and you've been asked to take a look. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, well, well. Okay. Using the address from the case file, you walk your way down to the harbor side. Here, rows of warehouses store various products, ready to trade to the mainland and to the rest of Malagree. Large numbers, painted in white, distinguish the warehouses from one another. Eventually, you find the numbers written down in the case file. Warehouse 13. Oh boy, 13! That's totally a lucky number. A very lucky number. The door is locked, knocking on it seems to gather attention from some of the dock workers outside. A large man comes over, dressed in a set of well-used waiters. Hmm. Warehouse is closed, mate. <laughs> he gives you a suspicious glare. 
What are you doing down here anyway? Um, do you know where the owner is? Maybe I do. Who's asking? I've been sent by the police. There's been an incident in this building. Huh. About bloody time one of you showed up. Right. You just wait here. You watch as he strides away. Five minutes pass. Then you see the man return with another dock worker. Oh, the beard. The, the luscious, beautiful beard. They reach out a greasy palm for you to shake. It's a pleasure. His name is Mr. Fisher. <laughs> Harold Fisher. I'm Harold Fisher. I've been told you're looking into my case. You return the handshake. Sly Shinryu. <laughs> Let's have a look at the warehouse, shall we? He leads you over to the locked door and whips out a set of keys. He pauses. Do you want to go into the front or through the hole? Oh! Oh! Mm? The hole? What's in the hole? Aye, the bastards blow a hole in the, my wall. Is it safe? He gives a full belly laugh. <laughs> it's not exactly up to code. Let's just use the door. Harold removes the padlock, opens the door, and enters into the building. As you follow suit, you're hit by a nauseating smell. Oh? Oh? Oh! We pass insurance! We don't vomit! Let's go! You close your eyes and shake it off. You've smelled worse than this. Boss! <laughs> I was there! I love it! Can I click on him? No, I can't. He's so cute, though. What is it, Alistair? What is it, buddy? Uh, buddy, I can't seem to use my controller. That's okay. This place smells divine. I'm impressed, mate. Most of... Most people would have keeled over. It smelled much better when everything was kept cool. Mind you, not that much better. He scratches at his beard. Now, it used to be you couldn't enter here without a coat. But some bastards gone and run off with the artifact we were using to keep everything nice and cold. And they blew a bloody great hole in my wall. It's not exactly ideal for business. So, fish. Okay. We're having to sell a, sell it a huge loss just so all of our fish here doesn't go bad. Huh. Here. I'll stand to the side and let you do your work. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Um. Let's examine the hole. You make your way over to the large hole blown into the side of the warehouse. Bits of brick and dust lay scattered on the floor. Um, let's investigate the debris. Come on, come on, come on. You're an investigator. You can do this. Yeah! Okay, we passed. You examine the debris from the explosion. Rubble is present only inside the warehouse. Whatever caused the explosion, it blew in from the outside. Visible in the dust, many footprints lead in and out through the hole. One set seems smaller than the others. You add it to the report. What to do now? Investigate the wall. Oh. Oh, nice. 15. Okay, very nice. Very good roll. Examining the walls. The lack of explosive residue implies that this was indeed magical. This is a magic caster. They're, they're doing magic crime. Magic caster's doing magic crime in the magic city with the magic spirits. Magic crime. Man. Given the thickness of the walls, it's likely that multiple people were involved in casting the spell that caused the explosion. A group of magic gangsters! <laughs> uh, and given the mess it's made, whoever did this didn't mind leaving a trace. They must be confident they won't be caught. Can't we, like... Didn't they say investigating, like, what's it called? Magical traces is a thing? What to do now? You look elsewhere. Hmm... I will ask Harold about the hole. What can you say about the hole, Harold? I can't believe those bastards blew a hole in my wall. I mean, a door I could replace, but the side of a wall? I'm gonna have to have men come in. Then I'm gonna have to have an inspector out. It's a whole health and safety fiasco. Bastards. Do you know what kind of... What could have caused this kind of hole? Well, uh, if it were explosive, my lads would have heard it. So I reckon it's gotta be magic. Oh, so they didn't hear it. Interesting. But I can't tell you much more than that. None of the none of the boys saw anything. The scum must have scouted some security black spot. You consider what to do next. What about your artifact? Right, yeah. The artifact was something we got important from the mainland. Okay, so... Kin... I forgot how to sp say his name. Kin. Kin is involved with that, right? Yeah, with the Bulwark Bazaar. We went through the Bulwark Bazaar. It wasn't cheap. 
we thought with the upgrade, we'd be able to store much more fish in for much longer. But unless it's recovered, now we'll be screwed. What? Are, what? Okay. If there's a mastermind behind this, what are they going to use a very chilling, like, artifact like that for? Hmm. Silent boom. Sonic boom. Wait, why, why, why? He gives a defeated shrug. Why anyone would want? Why would anyone want to steal a glorified ice pack? That's literally what I was thinking. How long did you have this artifact for? It's a tragedy. We only had her up and running for about a week. Just enough time to stock a bunch of fish, and now we've been left high and dry. Anything else? Anything about the Bulwark Bazaar? Oh yeah, Kinlan. It's run by a chap named Kinlan. Nice enough guy. The mass. They make masks for protection normally. Imports is just a thing they do on the side. If you want to talk to them, this is their address. He writes the address into your notebook. I, I already do have it though, but okay. <laughs> investigate elsewhere. Mm, investigate the artifact. Weaving between precarious piles of slippery, rotting fish, you make your way to the center of the warehouse. You see the damaged mechanical stand and where the artifact once stood. Mm, uh, let's start with this one first. Uh, <laughs> that one! I'm going to cry! It's a nat one! Oh god. You peer closer at the mechanical stand. You examine the machine. You have no idea how it works or what the stand's actual purpose was. Oh my god. However, judging from the extensive damage, whoever removed the artifact must have been in a hurry. What to do now? God. Yup, it's a stand, alright. Hmm, the stand seems very sturdy. And standy. <laughs> okay, um, let's investigate arcane traces. Please give us something to work with here. Oh my god! A net one? Mm -hmm. How can you get two net ones in a row? How? <laughs> I swear, if my next one's also not one, I'm just, I'm just gonna curl up into a ball. I'm just gonna curl up into a ball. Uh. You let your mind wander, embracing the arcane, trying to sense any lingering magic. The only energy you sense is from the hole in the warehouse. The explosion has masked all other traces. <sighs> what to do now? Alistair, can't you help me here? As you're about to leave, you spot something on the floor, nestled against some of the debris ripped out from the stand. <clears throat> A token for the spirit fair. Whoever did this must have a stand there. You quickly tuck it into your pocket and add it to the report. Obtained fair token. Let's check it out. Hmm. Fair token. A token held by both tent and stand holders at Malagree Spirit Fair. Okay, plus bonus to luck and intelligence. A mask is prominently displayed on the surface. Is it for... No? Are they trying to point it towards Kinlan? They might be. Oh, we'll see. You consider what to do next. Show Harold the fair token. Do you recognize this coin? He leans in and gives it a glance. Can't say I do from the looks of it. Uh, but, but from the looks of it, I'd say it has something to do with the fair. I'll ask around to see if any of the boys dropped it, but it's not really their scene. You consider what to do next. We shall conclude our investigation. I've concluded my investigation. That's all I need for now. Once we get information that I can share with you, we'll let you know. All right, but know that my fishing are my fish are rotting in the meantime. Harold sees you out locking the warehouse door behind him. Damn. Why not just make a big, you know, cookout or something? You know, do it for the fair. Heading home, my lodgings. After a long day, it's time to head home and reflect. Let's go reflect. I kind of want to see what happens at the fair specifically. Because, you know, things are bound to go bad at the fair, right? Um, or do you think that would be a good stopping point, you know, so we can see, you know, like, players would want to see what happens next? Hmm. As you head back to your lodgings, the heavens above Malagri open. Cold, heavy rain pelts the streets and wind begins to, wi wind begins to whip up. You pull your coat tight around yourself and quicken your step. You see other people scurrying along, now only lit by orange street lamps. Clouds above, obscuring what was left of the evening light. Hmm. Might be a good stopping point before the threads begin to knot into their final shapes. Fair enough. Okay. As you as you glance over your shoulder, 
One person in particular stands out. A shadowy figure bundled in dark clothing. They don't look at you directly, but you get a strange feeling. Corner after corner, they remain behind you. Mm. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, I, I won't even want them to... I won't want them to catch up to me. I'm gonna keep walking. Still in your mind, you press onwards. The lodgings aren't far anyway, and you long to get inside out of the rain. You glance back over your shoulder. The stranger has dramatically closed the gap between you. They stare directly at you and your heart sinks. Oh no, he's got uh, eyes on his arms. Investigator? They erupt into mad laughter. I've been sent to find you. The stranger slowly draws a short knife from their belt. Then with no warning, they leap straight at you. Fight back! That's my only fighting chance. Come on, go on. Yeah, I passed! Okay, good, good, good. Okay, um... As the assailant thrusts the knife towards you, you strike their arm, sending the blow, of course. Oh god, wait. L okay, hang on. Let's let's hide. Let's study the figure. It looks masculine enough. Okay, alright. Now, let's continue. Swinging forwards on instinct, you strike at their kidneys hard. Yeah! Punch him out, Sly! Punch him out! Recoiling, they fall back in pain. Their knife clatters to the ground. As they stagger into the streetlight, you can see, see them clearly for the first time. Their mask hides their face, but doused in orange light, a swarm of miniature tattooed eyes gaze at, your mal gaze at you malignantly from the arms of the anonymous attacker. I'm gonna go for the knife! Let's do it! Come on, come on, Gwen! No! Shit! Oh, oh, okay. You dive for the knife, but the stranger gets there first. In an instant, they're on top of you, knife in your chest. Ah! They laugh maniacally as ag agonizing pain throbs across your torso. The taste of blood fills your mouth. Incessant raindrops land on your face. Your body grows awfully cold. The laughter ceases as they draw in close, cradling your head in one hand. There. Isn't that better? You grow delirious as their, body hand, their bloody hand brushes across your cheek. It'll be okay. Soon you'll forget the pain. They drop you and lose con and you lose consciousness. Ah, oh, shit! I fucking died. <laughs> the world moves on without you in it, for better or for worse. Damn. I mean, you're right, but holy shit, I'm dead. Oh my god. Wait. They're trying to stop me. Grr. <laughs> Um, let's at least make it to the let's at least make it to the inn and then let's go. And then let's go and uh, Oh it's an autosave. Can I load this? Okay, so let's yeah, let's try to fight back and then let's try to leave. In before this is a bad roll. Okay, no, it's a good roll. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so now let's try to Am I feeling ballsy? Do I wanna go for the knife? Um, I kinda do. Not gonna, not gonna lie. <laughs> vigor. What's my vigor? Plus three. I'm, I think we can. I, I think we can, you know. <laughs> Am I gonna gamble again? I really wanna get the knife though. Let's just let's, let's try and try. Oh. Yeah, we passed! Okay, alright, cool, cool, cool. Diving, you grab the knife before they can recover. Obtained cultist knife! Woohoo! Okay. So, oh, okay. oh, they're cultists. Spinning around, you point at the stranger. Um. Uh, can I can I investigate the knife real quick? A sinister-looking blade meant for both ceremonial rituals and hand-to-hand -hand combat. This could be useful as evidence, and if it comes to it, a good way to defend yourself. I'm gonna save again. <laughs> I'm gonna save again. Um, yes. I, you know what, I'm, I, th I think Sly would probably just want to intimidate them. Come on, come on. Okay, we passed. All right, cool, 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 cool. You brandish the knife menacingly at the stranger. You're under arrest. You will come quietly. <laughs> they write themselves and smirk at you, spitting blood onto the floor. 
There's no way you'd use. Cutting them off, you smack the knife handle on their head with all your strength. They crumple to the ground, unconscious. Making sure they're out cold, you pick them up. You sigh. It's going to be a long walk to the police station. By the time you get there, every part of you is fully drenched. Inside, the skeleton crew of officers look with concern as you stump the unconscious body of the stranger onto the ground. <laughs> get crumpled! This jerk just tried to kill me. I think they're involved in the missing persons cases. I'll be back in the morning to question them. The officers all stare at you, bewildered. Wait, I recognize you from this morning. You're the investigator from the mainland, right? That's right. Put this person behind bars before they wake up. Oh, and restrain them so they don't do anything stupid. The officers glance at each other, but recognizing the significance of the arrest, do as you ask. Exhausted, the adrenaline taking its toll, you hurry back to your lodgings. You've never felt so relieved to get back to such a dingy house. Once again, you find yourself upstairs in the office. The rain still falls outside the window, and you change into some drier clothes. You reflect on how lucky you are to be in one piece. Now that you're feeling safer and in more comfortable clothes, you begin to try and process what just happened. Could that one attacker have been responsible for all the missing people? No, you think you to, to yourself. They said someone had sent them. But how did they know where to find me? You sigh. All questions you can ask them tomorrow when you interrogate them. For now, you do your best to settle and settle your mind and get some rest. Of course I'm going to speak with Alistair. What does he have to say? You spot Alistair in this desk drawer. As you approach, his pupil narrows to slits as he pulls it shut. From within, you hear his muffled voice, clearly sulky. How am I meant to help you if you don't let me get stronger? I'm so hungry. Um... Next time I feed you, I promise. I'll feed you when you're ready. Science fiend. I'll feed you when I wish. Um... Feed him? What are we feeding him? Uh, um... You know what? He seems like a little babu. I'll just say I'll feed him when he's ready. When I'm ready right now. Look, I even made my tail extra pointy. <laughs> That is a pretty pointy tail. But that doesn't mean I'm just going to let you eat everything we see. He stares at you with large, begging eyes. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks, boss. He's so cute. Okay, all right. No, Alistair, I'll feed you my entire soul, you little cutie patootie. Aw. <laughs> Souls of the damned puppy. <laughs> yeah. You decide to get some well-earned rest. Pulling yourself into bed, you search for sleep. I think sleeping with an open door window is bad. Aura passed. You wake from a restless sleep as early morning light creeps into the window. Also, I missed the achievement. I didn't see it. Shucks. Body aching, you rub the sleepiness from your eyes and throw on some clothes. Looking outside, it seems to have stopped raining. The streets seem cleaner. The events of yesterday evening washed away. You flip through your journal, skimming over the previous day's leads. Planning where to go next. Okay, so I think this is a good point to put a put a stop to it, maybe. Um, well, we died at one point. <laughs> but I think if you guys want to reach like the climax and see what happens, I highly suggest that you get the game. Thank you so much for playing. And thank you so much for gifting me a copy of it. Thank you so much. Well, not gifting. Providing me the key for a copy. Thank you so much, Gilded Rune Games. I am really enjoying it. I definitely will continue this. Um... I will definitely continue this like off stream, like what I'm doing with uh, another visual novel that I'm reading right now. This game looks very cool. I hope it sells well. Yeah, me too. I will definitely like post about it and I'll also try to give a review. <laughs> can I give a review? I think I can. Um, let me see. I like the writing and the pacing a lot. Um, I think that currently playing it with a mouse is a bit more convenient. Control feels a little wonky. Uh, controller feels a little wonky, but um, I don't like everything's really good. The art, the music fits very well. Um, let me see. Um, I hmm, I don't exactly know how to interpret the dice rolls and the stat pluses exactly, but you know what? I don't think that detracts from the experience or anything. Did you notice the mouse blinking? 
Wait, huh? Hang on. I'm... I'm staring at it. Give me a minute. Does it? Does it actually? <laughs> Sorry, I'm staring at it right now. Does it? I don't see it. Blinking. I... Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh wait, there's a tab in the book for stats. Oh wait, right. Oh. <laughs> it takes a while for it to blink, huh? Oh, okay. Nothing to worry about. Hmm. Okay, okay. Alright, so this is... This is how our stats are looking right now. We're pretty average in everything. Except for luck and vigor, which is pretty good, pretty good, you know? <laughs> Blinking jump scare, shut up! <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. You know what? This is, this is pretty cool, pretty good. You know what? I highly recommend you guys play this. I am excited to know what happens at the fair. And to see each hard to cook again. <laughs> So if you guys want to, you know, experience, I, I feel like this is going to be like a, a peak portion of the game or see Chantwick again. <laughs> I highly recommend you do get it. It's on Steam right now. And let me see. Yeah, go play. <laughs> Your thoughts, guys. Do you guys have any thoughts on the game so far that you want to share? What's with blinkings recently? We've had a few jump scares with blinking. Have we? I think we have. <laughs> Um, let me see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this has so far been Isle of Malagry, and I'm really excited. I'll probably tweet like my gameplay uh, experiences while reading through it. Yeah, I really enjoyed the writing so far. This seems very fun. I like it a lot. I feel like the story threads have been have a few ways they can go, and I want to see where they lead. Yeah, I I feel the same. The sky curse emoji in the Discord jump scare a few people. <laughs> oh yeah, that. It's definitely interesting. I like it. I'm really intrigued by the story goal. And also, hello boat. Hello, hello. I came in late, but it looks good. I like the dice rolls and stats. Mm -mm. It's nice to have a visual novel that does this. There are some visual novels that include other uh, gameplay elements, but I feel like I haven't seen more uh, that integrate dice rolls and stats. And I like, I like this, so yeah. Um, let's see. I guess that's where we'll wrap it up for today, guys. Now, let's go see who we can raid into. Who can we raid into? Um, also, just to double check, we got raided by Miyuna, Plum, Rose, Prism, and... Hang on. Wait, did we get another raid aside from that? We got from Kuro-san, right? Was it Kuro-san? I... Wait, I need to find their username specifically, or if the mods could kindly link them to me, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, as for raids, who can we raid into? We've got... Ailasama is streaming. Salmon streaming. Oh, Maria is streaming too. And then Rhea is also streaming. Mm, I don't think I've ever... Just raided into salmon before have i nor maria hang on let me see how long they've been streaming for just to make sure that they're still gonna be live because <laughs> if they won't be live you know um let me see oh salmon's playing jump king she started 19 minutes ago as for maria she started three hours ago um, she still seems to be going strong, but let's go raid into Salmon. Yeah, let's go raid into Salmon. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay, save. It's been lovely to see people enjoying the game. Yeah, so far, like, all the reviews that I've seen have been really good, so I'm excited. <laughs> Jump King, it will be long. <laughs> I'm sure someone could use a nice raid. Yeah. Okay. So remember, everybody, to be kind, courteous, and on topic. You only need to say Sky Raid once and only mention us if the streamer asks. Aside from that, I hope you guys have a lovely day and that I'll see you tomorrow on our next stream, okay? Otsukai, everybody! See you next time! Bye bye! Where were
were you at the night of the the abductions? Where were you? It was you, wasn't it? I bet it's you, Chad. I bet it's all your fault. This is this is, this is all your fault. How dare you abduct the people? Make them forget. How dare you?